Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sandy Kramers and I wanted to make a quick video for my family and friends to just let them know what needs to be done as soon as you start to feel symptoms. I'm going away for a week and I just want my family to know what to do if they start to get a runny nose, stuffy nose, um, sore muscles, headache, coughing, sore throat, or of course a fever. And they've heard this many times, but I wanna go step by step. What we generally do to remind them and what I do. Um, so the first thing I do, if somebody has any type of stuffy nose or runny nose, or if I think I've been exposed to COVID at work, I take a little alcohol pad, or I will take 70%, this is ethyl alcohol, uh, preferable to isopropyl alcohol. This is basically just like very strong, uh, like Bacardi 151 or really, really strong vodka. And then I'll usually stick this up my nose and clean it out. Most COVID, most viruses, most flu viruses come through the nose. They can, of course, come through the mouth and through the eyes, but most come through the nose. So if I feel like I'm starting to get a runny nose or a stuffy nose, or I can start to feel it kind of going into the back of my throat, that's the first thing I'll do uh, when I get home or as soon as I can, I'll pour a little bit of either the 70% alcohol or I'll take betadine, which is like this, betadine, povidone iodine, and this is 10%. So I dilute this, uh, it should say 10% on the back here. Um, and I'll, you know, just a couple of drops of this with a couple of drops of water. So 50% diluted to make the 10%, 5%. And then I'll take my Q-tip and then go into my nose and kind of clean it out, being very careful not to go, not hurt myself, of course, um, but go as far back as I can without hurting myself. And then if my kids are reluctant to do this, I've been known to shoot the, um, with a syringe, kind of shoot it into their nose sometimes, which is generally very safe as long as there's no iodine allergy. And none of my family has that. So that's the first thing I do. Then I have them, they know, they've known this for years, uh, get some coldies. We have sugar-free, we always buy this every year. And on the back, it used to tell you how to do this. So it says, um, better for children 12 years and over, but personally we've done it in younger kids. So you have to be careful with this and check with your doctor first. Everything I say, always check with your primary doctor and pediatrician. You should really try not to eat it within, it doesn't, oh here it is. Okay, avoid citrus fruits and juices or anything with, it used to say calcium, magnesium, uh, even potassium 30 minutes before and after, because it apparently affects the zinc coating of the mucous membrane. So this is not to swallow. Uh, this is to coat the mucous membrane. Same thing with this. And of course, with this, you don't want the kids to swallow it or you to swallow it. Um, it's pretty safe, but you don't want to swallow. You want to just kind of gargle it um, or use it in your nose. This is to suck on. And this, you know, I just mentioned, I'll put it in my nose and I'll also gargle it or I'll gargle the povidone iodine. Of course, you've seen in my other post, Listerine, coolant was studied, very salty water, which is I think half a teaspoon of um, salt for half a cup of water. So very salty. You can use it either as a neti pot or in your nose with a Q-tip or gargling it. And so apparently people in Japan do that pretty often. And then we have them take a hot shower, get right to bed as quickly as possible. I'll have them take a quercetin, which is, the, this was what it looked like. I'll put these links on my blog. Uh, which is an antioxidant that comes from kale and um, caper. So it's very uh, concentrated uh, antioxidants. And then I'll have them take um, vitamin D at some point. And I'll usually give them quite a bit. I'll usually give them like four, four of these. And these are kind of great flavor. So they're actually kind of tasty. Um, those are the key things we do. We have them get to bed right away, hot shower. If they're starting to get a, a headache, you've heard me talk about kind of massaging the trapezius muscle which really does seem to help in trying to find the spot where the headache is starting so they don't get a headache. Um, we have not used this yet, but I did buy some tonic water, which has quinine. I don't really know the date on this, but I did get this just in case. And I think that's it. Oh, and uh, we get a humidifier uh, for them right away. So we know that more, more humid uh, humidity is better for preventing the virus from attaching in dry mucous membranes, apparently. So we do that. Of course, we wear a mask. If somebody's sick, I'm very careful, uh, you know, mask. If somebody's sick, we isolate them in a room. So they're their own room, their own bathroom. I have one of these inside and outside of the door to the room of the sick person because we don't want this to spread. So before I go in, I put this on. And as soon as I come out, before I touch, before I touch the door at all, I basically put alcohol on my hands and I usually leave a Clorox wipe on the door knob and I'll put a rubber band around it on the inside and outside. So it's kind of semi killing whatever, you know, we don't want the, the virus to get through the house. Um, I think that's it. So basically uh, start treating right away. I don't wait until there's kind of bronchitis or a cough starting. 
um, get to sleep, hot shower, coldies, all the things I talked about, whether it is diluted betadine in the nose and gargling, um, ethyl alcohol 70%, which could be technically even Bacardi 151. We kind of joked with a friend of mine about uh, salty water and Listerine. And check out my blog for the risks of those things. You want to be aware of those risks, of course, with, of course, making sure you don't have an iodine allergy. Do a patch test. You can do it on your hand, for instance. Make sure you have no allergy. And also with Listerine, there's some concerns using it chronically could potentially increase the risk of diabetes because of the change in the mouth floor. So this is really meant to be used if you have symptoms, if you're exposed, um, those are the key things. I think that's it. And then humidifier we do, um, I do put maybe like a drop of the povidone iodine in this little kind of area here. Uh, that's very controversial. I just would say my family has done that. I don't recommend it necessarily for anybody else, but we've done that in, in a child that's starting to kind of maybe start to get a cough and we don't want that. So the theory is that the iodine might be um, aerosolized, but just be very careful with that. And I don't recommend it for anybody except my family. Um, is that it? That's it. I hope this helps. And oh, bone broth. I do definitely starve a fever, feed a cold, bone broth. So just basically just um, get a chicken, uh, defrost it and then put it in a pot of water and let it just boil for hours and hours and hours, which is good, of course, for humidity in the house, but also the soup really has, um, there's been some studies to show it helps with cold. It hasn't, there hasn't been any studies to say it helps with COVID, but I'm really kind of into that idea of no bread, no sugar, starving the fever, uh, trying to decrease the carbohydrates and sugar and bone broth. So that's it. I hope this helps.